Okay, so this is going to be our first interaction with Blender. This is the 3D scene that greets us just after we've closed down the splash screen. And I'll just go over the nuances of this uh, 3D scene in just a moment. But I'm going to guess that the first in instinct that you have uh, is not to go into the file menu up here and uh, click help and then the manual. I'm going to guess that the first thing that you're going to want to do is maybe have a little bit more of a direct interaction with Blender. I'm going to assume that you're going to want to take control of this camera that we're viewing this scene with here at the moment and just orientate yourself around. Maybe take a look behind the camera where it's positioned right now, see if there's anything else going on. Um, so uh, let's just take a look at the camera controls um, because they're quite simple, straightforward and uh, easy to adapt to. And they're all centered around the middle mouse button. So if we just hold down the middle mouse button and then start to move the camera, uh, start to move the mouse around rather, we actually end up moving the camera around, rotating the camera around, and we can see that there isn't anything behind the camera there. It's just this basic uh, setup here that we've got. And uh, we can also hold down the shift key while we hold down the middle mouse button. And then this will allow us to pan around the camera and um, this uh, or pan with the camera should I say and then if we just let go of shift and then actually use the control key instead and the middle mouse button we can see we can zoom in and out and uh, that gives us this nice uh, smooth zoom there there's actually something that we can do which is just to ignore the control key altogether and instead of holding down the mouse the middle mouse button we can just uh, use the scroll wheel instead and that will zoom us in and out of the scene um, so we can just get by which is what I usually do is just with the shift key just the one key there on the keyboard and then everything else with the middle mouse button so just to recap we've got the middle mouse button click down to rotate we've got the middle mouse button click down with the shift key to uh, pan the camera uh, you're gonna need you'll probably find that you need to hold shift first and then the middle mouse button to do that by the way and then also uh, we can just you either use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out or we can hold down control and then press the middle mouse button down um, similar to the other two actions for the camera and then we can just get this nice smooth zoom in and out Okay, so the next interaction that we might like to make is to select something that we can see in the scene here. So for example, we can see a cube over here. Let's just try and select this with the left mouse button, uh, which you might try to do in Maya or Max or many other applications. And we can see that uh, nothing seems to be happening. Maybe if we just try and click in a few other places. Uh, basically, we can see that the only thing that is letting us know that our mouse is definitely plugged in is the fact that we can see the mouse uh, cursor moving around and we do get this uh, red and white circular candy cane crosshair type rescue ring type thing, which is just um, f frustratingly and seemingly ineffectually uh, and a little bit mockingly um, to sort of follow in each click. Um, what this is, is actually quite difficult to determine if you're completely new to it because there isn't anything corresponding to this which is immediately obvious in the interface so there's no indication of this icon elsewhere uh, with maybe a readout next to it or anything so we don't really know what this do does um, we can't right click on it to see if any um, sort of um, context menu or anything like that we don't really know what the deal is with this this is actually pretty useful this is the 3d cursor but we'll get into this a little bit later on uh, in the meantime let's just crack the conundrum which is the fact that nothing seems to be selecting um, basically it is reasonably simple it's just the fact that uh, nothing is locked or masked or anything like that um, essentially all we would need to do is just use the right mouse button instead and then we can see that we can now select uh, our items in the scene here and we can see that the not only is it turned into an orange wine wireframe we can see that it, down here in the left it's uh, changing uh, updating to what it has actually selected at the moment we can see at the top here in the info header we can get some more information we can see in the outlet everything is essentially uh, updating we know that we're definitely selecting on things now um, the problem is it's the right mouse button and that is potentially extremely difficult to get the hang of if you especially if you come from a lot of other 3d applications and so on 
Um, it's easy to change this, by the way. We can just go to the uh, file menu here and the go to user preferences, and then we can see the input tab of the user preferences here has a select with section, and then we can just switch this to left. Um, the problem is that this is kind of sensible in a way. Now the reason behind this, or at least the way that I understand it anyway, is that um, it's trying to help you not do something that you didn't mean to do. Um, and uh, I'll just sort of look into this in just a minute, but that would, in my mind, uh, that would include not wanting to select something with the right mouse button and then accidentally move it. Uh, which is at the moment, unfortunately, is, is actually possible. Uh, if you actually just go to click on something and then sort of keep on moving and not let go fast enough, uh, you'll notice that we've now got this uh, object kind of in free form. And uh, if we just left click, we'll actually confirm that move. So I think it's actually quite uh, likely to be able to accidentally um, uh, move this, unfortunately. Uh, so that's why the right mouse button might not necessarily be um, uh, the help behind it might not necessarily be perfectly realized, but um, on the other hand, uh, it does allow us to be able to quickly and easily move things around in a single click. Uh, the reason why this is actually beneficial, though, is, is uh, comes into play with a little bit more of this kind of context. Now, what I've done with this cube, I've actually subdivided it a whole bunch of times, but don't worry about this just at the moment. We'll come to this in just a, a moment as well. Um, but if we actually have, we can see that we've got this 3D manipulator with the three um, cardinal axis of 3D kind of shooting off of it. These three arrows here, the X, Y, and Z corresponding to red, green, and blue, uh, respectively. And what we can see now, if I actually wanted to select this um, uh, vertex as well, we, c uh, we can see that the uh, essentially the gizmo, this 3D manipulator here, is in the way. And if we were to use the left mouse button to do that, we might. Uh, essentially start trying to move this instead it might get a little bit frustrating in fact you might need to um, turn it off which is what I would do in Maya personally I would actually just turn the gizmo off do some selections and then turn it back on again um, I'm just using control space for that by the way but we can see that this icon down here essentially does the same thing and um, that essentially is the benefit of it uh, the other thing is that it just kind of keeps the, for me, it keeps my brain a little bit more organized uh, to think that essentially selecting major items is all done with the right mouse button. And then everything else, pretty much absolutely everything else is the left mouse button. So um, that means that uh, left, it's left mouse button in here, it's left mouse button for all these items in here, tools and settings and dial switch knobs, um, you know, you name it. Um, uh, sprockets, whiz bangs, whatever we've got in here, um, it's going to be with the, it's going to be driven with the left uh, mouse button. But to actually select something, that is going to be the um, the uh, the right mouse button, as I say. And incidentally, if you do actually shift like that, uh, uh, right click, and then accidentally shift something, you can actually just press right mouse button to just reset the move again, which is perhaps more likely than accidentally then pressing the left mouse button. But anyway. Um, that's essentially what's happening. There's an alternative way, as I've pointed out in the user preferences, and um, it's quite straightforward. There's a little bit more of the ins and outs there. So for example, if we come down to some different select methods and we go to border select, we can see that it's actually, again, with the left mouse button, we would actually select with that, but that's because we're in no danger of accidentally shifting them in that mode, because once we go into a selection mode like that, there's nothing else that we can do really. Um, same with the other selection mode that we just saw there, the circle select. If I just um, press the middle mouse, just minus everything from the selection there, we can just left, we're, we're again left clicking and then right click to cancel that move. So it's a little bit awkward. It can be a little bit difficult to adjust to that particular thing. Um, those are some of the reasons to, uh, in the way that I understand them that there are the benefits. And there's a few other sort of tips in terms of um, navigating around with the default controls that we'll come to later. But um, hopefully that sort of um, helps to um, uh, uh, shed some light or uh, add some opinion to it if, if that is ever needed. Um, so uh, that's the, the, uh, the basics. Okay, so we've established that Blender by default will select with the right mouse button, as we can see here. And we've also established that with the left mouse button, we can change the position of the 3D cursor. So we know it's called the 3D cursor, but um, what does it actually do in a practical sense? So uh, let's just get into that now. Um, the other thing that I did when I first started introducing the 3D cursor just a moment ago was criticize it. 
um, which is never a good introduction really I suppose but um, basically this is uh, quite useful and the 3D cursor uh, the reason that I criticized it initially was because there was no position in the interface that we could see where there was anything as we were clicking that we could see that this was actually taking effect to give us some clue as to what it might do maybe try and figure it out intuitively from there so on and so on uh, that's because it's actually in the properties sidebar which is this over here which you can toggle on and off with the end key uh, we can see this over here with the view menu we can just go to properties there you can see again the end shortcut key there so if I just click on properties uh, what we can do what we're going to need to do unfortunately is just scroll down until we come to 3d cursor so provided we know the name of what this is we can track it down eventually but we can see 3d cursor and um, we can see it's uh, showing us the location of where the 3D cursor is in 3D space there. So if we actually just left click and drag on here now, we can actually move it more precisely, maybe round off these figures here, type in 6, 0, 3.5, and then we've definitely got that at that location in 3D space now. Um, something uh, that is quite useful with this while we're here, while we're visualizing the figures here, is the fact that we can press Shift C as a shortcut key to essentially zero out those values and we can see that there they've gone all gone to zero now so in just that one um, shortcut key we can essentially just reset that now the, one of the reasons that we might like to reset that uh, quickly to um, uh, the, the center of the world is because um, the location of the 3d cursor happens to be the location of where new objects are added into the scene so if we come to our add menu and just go add mesh and then maybe add a UV sphere. We can see, um, we've, actually if I just press Z to show the wireframe, we can see um, we have this UV sphere now which has been entered at the uh, exact location of the origin, uh, the center of the world there, so zero, zero, zero. If we just take a look at the sphere that we have selected at the moment, we can see down here that we've got the sphere selected and we can see the location is zero, zero, zero. If I just press uh, undo, and then um, left click out here somewhere, we can see that the um, location of the 3D cursor is now um, this, basically seven minus three, three. Now, if I go to do that again, go add mesh UV sphere, we can see that the, the mesh now arrives on the scene at the location of the 3D cursor, and it, was, it should be at the location of seven minus three, three. So let's just scroll up to just check that. We can see the, the location for this is seven minus three, three. So that's basically, uh, hopefully, Sort of shows to demonstrate that. So if we just delete that again, now the other thing that we can use the 3D cursor, which is quite useful for, is as a point of uh, rotation for or scale, um, a, a kind of a movable global pivot point, basically. So um, what that allows us to do is say we have a um, uh, and uh, this origin here, we've quite carefully lined up exactly where this origin is, and we don't really want to have to move it and then have to move it back again. We want to just be able to use this because this is in the position that we want it to be. We want to just rotate around this position. Uh, well, we can quickly do that by just shifting the uh, what it's using as its rotation center. So for that, we would come down to the header here in the 3D view. We can click on this uh, drop down menu here and we can see it's called the pivot point menu. Um, one of the options is the 3D cursor. As soon as I do that, we can see that the, uh, the 3D manipulator here, the uh, gizmo in the scene, it has shifted to that location. In fact, if we just come down to here again, as we did before, we can see that we can start to move that around now wherever we might like it to be. And in in uh, specifically, if we just shift to rotate here, that's what these options here, we've got move, rotate and scale. Um, we'll probably go over this a little bit later on in, in a bit more detail, but if we just switch to rotate for now, uh, we can see that we can actually just rotate using that around that, that set that as our center basically so that's quite useful there um, to actually have a bit more precision over the location of this, this 3d cursor what we can do is employ a, um, a snapping menu that is specific to this so if I just um, right click on this camera here that's what this icon represents here in the 3d view it's just the location of the renderable camera if I actually go shift uh, s now to bring up our snap uh, a little snap menu here we can see we've got these four options down here are to do with the cursor and in fact there's another one here to do with the cursor but this is just moving the selection to the position of the cursor and we've got this cursor that can be moved to all these other areas so what we can do is we can move the cursor to the selected 
and now we can rotate around the camera as its uh, center of origin, uh, which while still using the cube. Once we're finished with that, we can obviously just switch it back to the active element or maybe one of these other options. And we can see now that although the 3D cursor is still at that location, we've not destroyed or we don't have to now center the pivot point for this or uh, anything else like that. So that's um, some of the ins and outs and some of the usefulness of this uh, 3D cursor. We'll be visiting, revisiting the uh, some of the options and opportunities that we've got with 3D Cursor, but um, that should do just as a slight introduction just to help see what this is on the scene. Unfortunately, there's no way to sort of switch this off, by the way. Um, uh, the, the, not if you want to still be able to see some of these other non-renderable items, such as the grid and some of these icons that we see in the view. Uh, the, the only way that we could do that really is to just simply come down to our display and switch on the only render. And as you can see there, the 3D cursor is now gone, but so is more or less everything else. So uh, whether that's useful to you or not, uh, there's uh, potentially maybe there's a uh, <clears throat> there'll be a uh, an addition soon to the code which will allow that functionality. Who knows? But the um, perhaps you might be able to even code it yourself. So. Uh, as is the nature of an open source piece, piece of software. So, uh, but anyway, that's the ins and outs of the 3D cursor before I get too far off onto other digressions and things. Uh, let's just wrap it up there on this particular topic.